In episode four, Jimmy and Gabrielle do end up meeting up a couple days later. She ends up convincing him to show her exactly where he works. Jimmy, just thinking that she's taking an interest in his life, is more than happy to show her the operation and all the strains of weed that he's created. But he also gets a little too chatty. He reveals to Gabrielle that this operation, the one at Eddie's estate, is actually one of the smaller operations. They have about 12 of them, and some of them are a lot bigger. And that's exactly the information that Gabrielle needed. Eddie's operation, though, might actually be expanding, despite his best efforts. Susie tells him that in order to make their money back from the weed that Jimmy lost, they need to expand the business and use the stables, which Eddie is not a fan of. He wants them off his property, not expanding on it. Susie, however, reminds him that he promised he would make them more money if they left the property, but yet they fail to get a detailed breakdown on exactly how he's going to do that. So until that happens, she's going to want to expand, at least for the time being, to make that money back. The two leave at an impasse. Eddie's actually got a funeral to attend. The 8th Lord of Bassington had a heart attack. The guy was batshit insane. I mean, absolutely nuts. But Eddie runs in the circles where lords end up attending other lords' funerals. So even though Eddie really didn't know this guy all that well, or really his family, he and his mother are going to attend. His mother, by the way, has taken a keen interest on Susie Glass's operation. She doesn't want Eddie wrapped up in it. She's a fan of Susie getting the hell out of there. When Eddie gives her the latest, he assures her, I'm not going to let them go into the stables and expand the business. And she offers her help. She wants to get them off the property. So she says, Eddie, you know, I can see if maybe I can talk to somebody. But he says, no, mom, that's not necessary. I will take care of it. The two then head off to this funeral where Eddie's mom whispers in his ear that the new Lord Bassington is named Max. He's in his early 20s and he actually knows Freddie from school. While Eddie is unfamiliar with Max, there is somebody in attendance that Eddie is familiar with, and that's Rosie. After the funeral, the two start chatting at the reception. Eddie's a little concerned about Rosie being friends with Stanley Johnston now that he knows how Stanley Johnston made his money, but Rosie doesn't seem all that concerned. And it's unclear to Eddie whether she knows how Stanley made his money or not. He then decides to change the subject, though, and asks Rosie, how well do you know Max? And she knows him a little bit. Max is a struggling artist. He wants to be an actor, and since his father died, he's been a little lost. This could be the perfect opportunity for Eddie to find a new location for Susie, so he asks Rosie to introduce him so that the two can have a conversation. When the two sit down and chat, Eddie is very covert about the nature of the business opportunity, but it's pretty clear about what he's talking about, and Max is all for it. I mean, this is easy money for him. There's just one little issue that Max needs to take care of first. His father was being blackmailed. Some guy called up claiming that he has a dossier full of embarrassing information, and if he doesn't pay him $500,000, then he's going to leak it to the press. And Max can't let that happen. He's got a huge audition coming up, and even though his father is dead, that kind of negative publicity could lead him to losing the role. So he needs to take care of this covertly. And now that Eddie has come to him with this proposition, it's pretty clear that Eddie knows people who might be able to take care of a blackmailer. The other thing that Max asks is that when Eddie does end up getting the dossier, he doesn't open it. And Eddie is totally cool with that. So they have an agreement. If Eddie is able to take care of this blackmail situation, then Max will take on Susie's business. Eddie's pretty excited about this, and he heads to Susie's gym to give her the good news. But Susie says, we usually take a couple months to vet potential landlords. We don't just jump into bed with these people. She's also pretty hesitant because of this whole blackmail situation that's shady. But it is a really good offer. And she is willing to, at the very least, take a meeting to figure out whether or not she wants to get into bed with Max and his family. After getting the okay, Eddie is able to make contact with the blackmailer. He goes to the meeting site. And when he meets this guy, it's just some overweight dude in his 50s who's a wannabe journalist. Eddie brought the money, but this guy didn't bring the documents. He tells Eddie that he needs to go to a Chinese restaurant first. And when the two head to this Chinese restaurant, Eddie finds out that the documents are not there. The reason they had to head to this Chinese restaurant is because the journalist owed $500,000 to the guy who owned the restaurant. A big, giant guy. 
intimidating guy. The journalist figured, I'm just going to take this money. I'm going to hand it to this guy. I'll clear my debts. I'll eventually hand over the dossier and we'll be good to go. But that's not the way Eddie sees it. He's not about to hand over $500,000 without getting the dossier first. And that's a problem for the restaurateur. This causes a fight between the restaurateur and Eddie. But it gets to a point where they're both way too tired to continue. So Eddie hops on the phone with Susie and explains the dilemma that he's in. And Susie tells him, put the guy on the phone. As soon as Susie Glass drops her name, and more importantly, her father's name, he changes his attitude quite a bit. During the fight, the journalist got scared off and ran. So the agreement that Susie has with the restaurateur is that if she pays the debt, he gives up the journalist's address, which he does. And Susie and Eddie head over there, to the surprise of the journalist, that's for sure. They see the guy's operation. He really just rummages through rich people's trash and finds dirt on them. Nothing more than that. And he's more than happy to hand over the dossier, but they want him to come with them. They need to confirm that whatever blackmail he had on Max's father is legit. And even though the blackmailer doesn't want to, he's kind of forced to. That night, all three of them head to Max's house. They deliver the dossier. And to his word, Eddie never opened it, even though Susie really wanted to. Max ends up opening it. He confirms that the embarrassing information is in fact in there, and then he throws it in the fire. But that's when the blackmailer ends up spouting off a little bit. He reveals to everybody that he was never blackmailing Max's father. He was blackmailing Max. Because Max has an interest in a very macabre collectible, if you will. Eddie, he's pissed off. He feels lied to, he feels betrayed, and he wants more information regarding the situation. So Max decides to show him what he collects. They go into a secret room, and Max collects Hitler paraphernalia. Hitler art, Hitler guns, Hitler flags. Oh, and then the coup de gras is Hitler's right nut that's just saved in a jar in formaldehyde. Yeah, the guy is like a Hitler nut. And he couldn't let word get out that... He collects this kind of stuff, even though he has massive respect for Addie. Eddie feels like this is a non-starter, that they're going to have to find a new location because there's no way that Susie can get in a bed with this dude. But Susie is still entertaining the idea. She doesn't care what this guy collects. She cares about the business opportunity, and this appears to be a good one. But that's when all hell breaks loose. Because the journalist was standing there the entire time, and he was filming this interaction. But he was caught by Eddie's housekeeper, if you will. Guns were grabbed by everybody, they all had kind of a standoff, and then shots were fired. Eddie once again shines in these moments, he seems to be unflappable, and in the end, Eddie, Susie, and the journalist walk out unfazed. Well, the journalist is very much fazed, he was terrified. The housekeeper, she was killed, and Max was knocked out with the formaldehyde bright nut bottle, and he's laying in the building unconscious. When Felix arrives, Susie gives him the rundown on what to clean up and what to do, and then they all head home. Eddie's still trying to figure out at this point how he's going to deliver on his promise to make them more money. But as he's trying to relax in the wee hours of the morning, his mom walks in and gives him great news. She's found a location for Susie's operation. It's literally the neighbor. She was talking to Jeff about this, and he suggested the neighbor because he's in a little bit of a financial struggle, so... She went over and talked to him, and he appears to be on board. Eddie is not only relieved, he's actually very impressed by his mother. And when he gives Susie the information, she says, okay, I'll take the meeting with the neighbor. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry, it'll be up in a day or two.